Types of Government by Mr. Amster. If you are taking notes on this video, please make sure to have a sharpened pencil or pen and a highlighter. Whenever you talk about government, there needs to be an agreement. The government has to be able to work by getting the many to agree to follow the rules of a few. Now, the government provides services like food and protection in exchange for the people's support, which includes taxes and in providing manpower for armies and to grow food. Now, please take a moment if you are taking notes to highlight government only work, many agree to follow the few. Please, of course, feel free to pause the video. Otherwise, we're going to keep going. The first type of government is probably the most common that most everyone thinks about. And that's called a monarchy. Mono, mon, means one. Archy means ruled by. So ruled by one. Now, as you can see, you see a pharaoh. an emperor, an example of Chinese leadership. The pharaoh, of course, was the leader of the ancient Egyptians. You have a king. You see a queen, like Queen Elizabeth, at the bottom. All of these are types of monarchies, and they usually have an absolute power, where they can decide the decisions that they want to do. Now, today in England, the UK, the queen is much more of a figurehead. She doesn't have the same power that ancient monarchs used to have. Please take a moment and highlight one ruler. The next up is an aristocracy, and it is the Greek word meaning rule of the few, best, or excellent, aristo. Now, power is in the hands of the small, wealthy, upper class. And they're usually very highly educated and at this point have usually removed the king because they think that they can do a better job. Please take a moment to highlight power, hands, small, wealthy, upper class. An oligarchy means rule by two or three rulers. And it's seen as sort of a bridge between an aristocracy and a monarchy. So you had a monarchy. It was overthrown by the aristocracy. But then a few aristocrats kind of rose above and became rulers. Now one of the areas you see this in is a place called Sparta. When we learn about the Persian Wars, you'll hear that Sparta's king, Leonidas, went to the Battle of Thermopylae. Well, they actually had another king who stayed back there to do all of the administrative work. Another type of ruler is tyranny. Now, this is a tyrant person who maintains power through force. Now this word has been, meaning has changed over time. And it's seen today as an abuse of power and authority. You can look up words like absolutism or dictatorship. Now Thomas Jefferson, who you see right here, was the third president of the United States. And he, when he was talking about the foundations of the United States said, when the people fear the government, there is tyranny. When the government fears the people, there is liberty. And what he was trying to get across is that the government should not be the ones that abuse their power. The power needs to be in the hands of the people in the United States. Please take a moment to highlight seizing, maintaining power force. 
Now, one of the things I want to get you to understand is that in Greece, they had the rise of the tyrants after the aristocrats fell. And they did a really great job of supporting what the lower class wanted. However, eventually they became corrupt as the other leaders had become. And what that led to was democracy. Chrissy means ruled by, demo, the many. And this is where decisions are made through voting. That's what democracy means. Decisions are made through voting, either directly, where you directly vote for something, or indirectly, where you elect somebody to speak on your behalf. Now, either way is democracy, and it's about power to the people, voting, and shared power and responsibility. One of the most famous voting things is the Uncle Sam, I want you to vote. Please take a moment and highlight decisions made through voting. One of the things that is most confused by students, or confusing to students, is the meaning of republic. Now, it's similar to a democracy, but it is not the same thing. In a republic, the rule of law is what's important. The rights of the people. They may have the right to vote and speak, but that does not mean that they are voting. Usually it does, though. Most republics have voters, have representatives voting on their behalf. Now, the original republic was in Rome, and you can see the Roman Senate down here, where senators voted speaking on behalf of their citizens. And the motto of it was SPQR for the Roman Republic, which translates to the Senate and the people of Rome. The United States opening statement as a republic. The United States is not a democracy. It is a republic, a democratic republic. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union. Now, you've learned about several types of governments over these last few minutes. Let's check for understanding. I want you to take a moment and think about in what ways do you see pieces of each government in this class? Do we have, first of all, an agreement? How is it a monarchy? How is it an aristocracy? Does it have elements of an oligarchy? Is there tyranny? How is this class democratic? And in what ways is it a republic? Please, of course, feel free to ask me any questions. The end.